welcome to Flow and Creativity. Um, this is your first module, uh, choosing the right word. Hopefully this works. I think this is take four, but hopefully we have it down this time. Um, and hopefully you can see the board as well. Um, if you can't, just let me know and I'll try and fix something for the next few modules. Um, so, the first thing we have to understand while we're writing is that writing is an art form. And rather than using brushes and paints and things like that, we're using words as our medium. So it's really essential in writing to choose the right word, um, no pun intended, uh, as much as when you're painting to choose the right colours um, for your brush. So bearing that in mind, we can consider a very simple sentence, drawn man, uh, kindergarten level, easily understood, and try and make some changes to it. So one thing we can do is look at synonyms for the word ran. Um, for example, John sauntered, John bolted. Um, both of those uh, suggest that John moved, but in a very different manner. Um, something else we can do is look at changing the word John with the name John Martha. So Johnny ran is uh, one thing we can look at. Um, uh, the other thing I should say is I'm not using teleprompters or anything like that, no notes. So please forgive me if I stutter or mess up a few times. Um, so Johnny Rand, what this is basically telling us is that the narrator, the persona, has a very special relationship with John, uh, endearing enough to call him Johnny. So not only does this tell us something about John, but it tells us something about the narrator persona as well. Combining these two ideas, we can come up with, say, Johnny Bolted, which kind of gives us the image of maybe a small boy running from a room with a cookie in his hand that he just stole from the cookie jar. Um, so that's one way to look at it. Now, concise wording is very important. Um, not so much short, but saying what you need to say. Uh, getting the message out in the shortest, fewest number of words possible is essential because it holds your reader's attention by keeping the story short, uh, fast-paced and always moving. Nobody wants to be bogged down with lengthy descriptions or heavy terminology or bulky dialogue. You want to keep things short and crisp so your reader stays interested. Okay, so we can consider the difference between this sentence, Susan, or Susie for short, couldn't believe the sight in front of her, and an edited version, Susie was shocked. So there's nothing wrong with the original statement. It's, uh, it's perfectly fine, it's grammatically correct. But if we wanted to increase the pace, decrease the wordiness, most of us know that Susie is short for Susan, so this whole first speech is redundant. And then another way to say she couldn't believe what was in front of her is saying she was shocked. It's the same base emotion. It's saying basically the same thing. It's just a, very, uh, it's a much shorter and more efficient way to do it. Uh, but on the other hand, if you were to take a sentence like, it was rather disappointing, said Chelsea. And I really wanted to look into Chelsea's personality and explore Chelsea herself. We could say something like, it was like the worst thing ever, said Chelsea. Or even, it was like the worst day of my life ever. Um, something, that, <laughs> something to that degree, to show uh, Chelsea's personality. In uh, this second part, we can probably assume that Chelsea is probably a younger female. Um, maybe a high school girl, um, because even though this is longer, the second statement is longer than the original statement, it's, uh, it's selecting the right words we want to use to convey Chelsea, uh, Chelsea's ideas, Chelsea's um, personality, essentially. So, very much in mind, what options do we have for helping us choose the right word? Well, one is a thesaurus. So, uh, some of us are probably often familiar with the thesaurus. Um, it's just a dictionary which lists synonyms and antonyms for words. And if you don't have one, don't worry, because there's a very excellent one online at thesaurus.com. You simply type in your word, press enter, and a whole slew of options will come up for you. So it's really very effective, very efficient, um, very fast. Another alternative is simply brainstorming. So, you know, if you're looking for another word for laughter, take a piece of paper, write down giggle, chuckle, chortle, anything like that, and keep it. Very right? soon you'll have your own thesaurus with words specially tailored to what you are looking for and to what you like to write about.
Finally, as with everything, practice, practice. Practice is essential. The more you practice writing, the better you'll become at it. It's no different than a musical instrument, than painting, than anything like that. So just make sure you practice. So this is a sample exercise, not your module exercise, just a sample to get you thinking. How many synonyms can you think of for the word beautiful? There's a lot out there. I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. So there are a couple I came up with. Attractive, gorgeous, pretty, dazzling, alluring, stunning, pleasing and radiant are just a few of the very, very many. The one thing we can think about when we're looking at these is the variety of connotations these words have. So if we were to take just for example dazzling, alluring and pleasing, think about the difference. Dazzling could be you know, glitzy, sparkly, glamorous, think disco balls and this project your light in my eyes. Um, another one is pleasing. So something that's pleasing may be pleasing to the taste, so palatable, delectable. Something pleasing to the touch would be soft and warm, probably. Um, something alluring is attractive, sometimes in an almost dangerous way. Like uh, this projector light is probably alluring to mosquitoes, which fly towards it and they get burnt. But in any case, they're all synonyms for beautiful. But none of them mean exactly the same thing as beautiful. That's the, that's the beauty of the English language. Every and any language, I guess, but uh, every word means something slightly different. No two words are exactly the same, or we wouldn't have two words. So it's very important to bear in mind that when you're looking for the right word, none of these words mean exactly the same thing. They're all slightly different, slightly different contexts. Which means that it's important that when you're writing, don't choose the impressive sounding word for the sake of sounding impressive. Uh, very, very often people do this, you know, English papers, uh, <laughs> science papers, science journals. Um, don't just go in the resource saying, my character is intelligent, my character is educated, let me find a big word for them to use. No, because if you aren't familiar with the word, chances are you won't understand the connotation uh, it has, the context in which it's supposed to be used, there's a good chance you might use it incorrectly. So you want to be very, very careful about that. Um, that's not to say you should learn new words, by all means, go out. You know, find new words, find sample sentences, learn the context of that word before you use it. Don't just use new words. Another good tip is to read your sentences aloud. If uh, it sounds off, probably is off. Um, you, uh, you want to be careful about that. And the third thing is make it natural. Um, if your character is a high school girl, write like a high school girl. That's the beauty of creative writing. You're writing for your characters, you're writing for yourself. You don't have to uh, adhere to a particular uh, rubric or anything like that. There's no scientific journal that you're, uh, you're uh, striving for. Just write the story. And if it's about, you know, um, Billy Joe in Tennessee, write like Billy Joe in Tennessee would write. Uh, or at least write her dialogue the way she would say it. Um, don't be afraid to do those kind of things. So this is your module exercise now. Um, next sure I want to get you started. So I'm giving you a list of creative writing prompts and the trick is you're only allowed one word to answer it. So only one word to answer each of the questions. I think there's eight altogether. And you can just number them one to eight and then post your answers on Avenue, which I think is the platform we'll be using. And um, uh, we, and you know, we can show each other's answers, see what you think of everybody else's. And feel free to be creative. I mean, this is creative writing. You have quite long use anything. Just be prepared to justify it. So um, I'll probably post these on Avenue as well. But just in case you can't really read it, I'll, uh, I'll read them all for you. So the first one is when you open your refrigerator, you find a penguin on the top shelf. What does the penguin say to you? The second one is to describe your worst nightmare. The third one is uh, what is bliss? The fourth one is uh, what would you call a film about your life? So what would you title it? And remember, two uh, use only one word. Uh, the fifth one is what is life? And I mean, be creative, don't just go for the obvious synonyms. The sixth one is you are locked in a windowless room with a rabbit and a hamster. What do you do? The seventh one is to invent your dream job. And by all means, hyphenate that one. I couldn't do it without hyphenating. So go ahead and hyphenate that one. And 
The eighth one is you are stranded on the side of the road in the middle of a blizzard. What do you do? So that's it for the first module. Thank you so much. And remember to post your answers on Avenue so we can all have a nice discussion. And I'm going to film the second module right now. So see you soon.